Hey folks, today we're going to go off the beaten track a bit and take a first look at a 5X game called Humankind, a turn-based game that may or may not give Sid Meier's Civilization franchise a run for their money. Uh, the, the developers of this game are officially releasing it in August later this year, but are allowing some of us to play the game in open dev beta. And that said, this is Victor beta version. This is Victor right here. I was kind of wondering why this guy in a suit would be a part of a Civilization game, especially back when we were dealing with the uh, Neolithic period. These are all of our competitors right here. Uh, this is Yanga, Burke Black. As you can see, there might be some people you might actually even recognize. Burke Black's a tw Twitch streamer. Uh, Quill18 is both Twitch, but he's I think he's better known on YouTube and Spiffing Brit as well. You can actually choose your AI. The AI difficulty, we're going to do Metrop Metropolis. Uh, you can also do Nation, Empire, Civilization. This kind of seems like a little bit less than hard, a little bit uh, more than easy. So we'll go ahead and start right there. We'll dive right into the game and give it a look-see. All right, so here we are, and first of all, I want to say that this game looks absolutely beautiful with the uh, the way, like, well, there's fish right here, we have a deer right here, there's mountains to explore, uh, all sorts of, like, wonders and all sorts of stuff that we can actually explore. Right now, we're on the shoreline, and we have the opportunity to maybe kill this deer, as you can see the peace sign. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to assume that the peace sign means that the deer is not looking for a fight, but we are. It's going to go ahead and come over here so I can explain everything. Let's go ahead and just jump right in there. Fire. Jump right in there and, and attack this guy. All right, so we're going to eliminate all the enemies. Our side is stronger. We can go ahead and confirm the battle. Let's go ahead and do it. If we were to uh, to retreat, we would lose half our points, our movement points. So right now we have four. It'd be moving down to two. We can actually deploy. This is what makes this a little bit different than, say, uh, than civilization. See, we can, we're right here right now, but we can actually deploy over here. And we might just come over here. I wonder how I'd do that. There we go, just like that. Let's go ahead and into deployment. And there he is right there. And that guy is not, he just moved right back. Let's just hold off. We'll just defend. Here he comes. All right, so one of the things about this AI, the way it works is, is that uh, you got high ground and low ground. If we go ahead and, and and just get a preview right here. As you can see, our we were getting plus four from the high ground, plus 10, uh, 10 on combat strength. The uh, deer actually has eight combat strength, but it's minus one because we've already started to damage him up. So the minimum that if we attack him is going to be uh, 34, the max will be 46. For us, uh, the max is going to be a negative 25. So I feel real comfortable with attacking this guy at this point. I don't think we did much of anything, did we? Sure didn't. And the AI got smart enough to actually come up and try to attack us from the side rather than the bottom. All right, so we we uh, it lasted for one turn and two battle rounds. That's good. We we were granted uh, five food and five influence. Now influence is kind of an important thing. Uh, to the top right, we have uh, influence points we can earn. We will eventually have use these influence points to build out outposts which aren't really cities, but are ways to kind of claim a territory as our own. Those outposts can eventually become cities. But uh, right now, it's it's just uh, there'd be an outpost. We're probably going to put an outpost right here just so I can show you how it all works. As you can see, this right here, these little dotted lines will show where my uh, where my outpost will control or try to control one of the two. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, we're exhausted, so we'll just end our turn right here. And somebody else has uh, got the world deed for the... Uh, Danakil uh, Desert. If we come right here, you can see there are competitive deeds that we can grab. Uh, explore this world to discover its wonders, build a holy site. We can do all sorts of stuff. And I guess this is kind of like the, uh, it's like prestige points or something for uh, the civilization. So we can say like, hey, you know what? We are badass. We uh, we found this first. Go, uh, go suck a, a duck or whatever. Click on this right here. It's going to show us our era stars. So one of the things that changes this from civilization is, is that we progress from era to era by uh, collecting stars. We just need to get one star to choose our first culture. We're not a culture right now. We're just a tribe. We're a wandering nomadic tribe just trying to, you know, we're squirrels in the world looking for our nut. Once we can get this once one uh, star, we can actually become a culture. We'll show the cultures right here. These are all locked right now. Um, as we, we can do Phoenicians, we can do Zoo, Assyrians, Babylonians, Egyptians, Harapins, Hittites, My, Mycenaeans, uh, Nubians, Almacs, all sorts of stuff we can choose. We'll get to that here in a second. As far as the stars are concerned, we, need, we can either grow our population by five for a growth star, or we can do a knowledge star, which is discover 
curiosities to accrue 10 in science. Uh, it'll, it'll unlock the uh, Neolithic legacy trait, which would be nice to have, but I don't know if we'll make it to that point. We might just just skip right over the Neolithic to go to the ancient without without accomplishing that. Uh, the Hunter Star, we actually have one of three right now, so if we can find two more animals, we can actually push our way into the next uh, era without much of a problem. So that, that, that let's go ahead and move. I'm going to move over here so we can show you one of these things. And this is a curiosity that's been collected. One of the armies found the following curiosity is nuts. They were like, huh? What is that? Is that a nut? I don't know. We'll go ahead and uh, do this. Set up an outpost. As you can see, they're nice enough to let us know where the best places are for an outpost. As you can see, as we scroll over these different things, it's going to tell plus 115 for food, plus uh, 2 for tools, plus 10 and plus 12 would be the best. So we're going to go ahead and set up this outpost and look at that. We have a deer right there. How nice of them to to uh, deal with this. Now the outpost is going to take three turns. In the meantime, we can kind of continue to explore our area. Yeah, let's go behind him. And we'll attack him on, uh, on regular ground. Just like sneak up on him and ambush his ass. There we go. Your sight is stronger overall, of course, so we're going to go ahead and do an instant battle uh, resolution instead of doing the confirmed battle. The confirmed battle is kind of fun because you can kind of put your units around when you want them, but we can just go ahead and just do this. And there we go. We have a victory. That's uh, that's number two for our Neolithic stars. The spoils we've gained have been five food and five influence. We have five and five. For, in order for us to switch out into something else, like uh, build another outpost, we're going to have to think at 20 influence. So it's going to be a hot minute before we get there. But whatever. Let's go ahead and cross over here and see what's over on this curiosity as well. I do believe that looks like some more nuts, but we'll see. move over here awesome. there we go what do we find we found some more nuts just a squirrel in the world looking for a nut what's this over here that's co that's copper so we have some other things that we could possibly find over here uh the copper might be good for uh obviously it's gonna be good for the bronze age it might be good for trade and stuff um we're not gonna worry about that just yet we're just gonna move continue moving up and look at there. Looky, looky. A world deed accomplished. You achieve the following deed. Be the first to discover Mount Morema. So we got 50 out of this. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's locate it. There it is right there. That beautiful, beautiful looking uh, thing. It somehow got us something. And if we locate the event right here, we can just acknowledge it. Perfect. Now, one of the things that happens is we'll end up creating an outpost. We decide to make this a city, then we'll eventually be able to, like, I guess, swallow this whole area into uh, one big giant, giant look. So we can uh, actually uh, take care of all the resources, capitalize on all the resources within just one city. So I'm just going to keep moving. Actually, let's go and let's go and take this deer out. There we go. We'll uh, go ahead and pop him so we can jump into the next age. And dead, dead. We have two of five for here. And we entered our new era. You earned one era star and may now choose a new culture for your next era. So we're going to go ahead and choose it. I might have, under most circumstances, I'd probably just wait and see if I could accrue more stuff. That would be kind of cool. But I think that in our case, we're just going to go ahead and do it. Now, here's the Egyptians. If we click on this, we can actually see what they can do. Plus one gears uh, industry on district producing. Industry modified district industry cost by negative 10%. So we're... We're in, the Egyptians are pretty industrious. Our pyramid will give us plus one influence and plus three industry, minus ten in stability. I still don't know what a lot of these mean. It looks like everything that you build, you start to lose stability. So you got to figure out how you can manage how you can manage building more stuff and without losing like the support of your peeps. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know. Plus one worker slot on city or outpost, and our um, our. Warrior, our special warrior is going to be the uh, Markabata. I guess that's how you say it. They're a ranged combat unit. So we're going to go ahead and just adopt this just because I like the Egyptians and I think it's pretty cool. Grand planners. Yeah, let's go ahead and confirm it. Ah, the challenges of and now we get a cut screen. Perfect. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. 
towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Perfect. So that's it. We we were in the Neolithic. Now we're in the ancient world with the ancient Egyptians. Well, isn't that just cool? And look at that big boy right there. We got plus fifteen. We need twenty to get two to get another one. Down here, we'll go ahead and set up our town. We can actually build a city creation that's going to give us plus three influence, plus three food, plus twenty district fortifications. So let's go ahead and do that right there. Um, it's going to take a second, I think. And I believe that once we find some more food, we can actually uh, build another warrior. So 15 plus 3. Where's my other guy? He was around here, wasn't he? Your researchers are currently idle. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so we got research as well. We can do uh, Empire Research is 3 Science. We can actually research calendars, domestication, carpentry, or city defense from the uh, very get-go, but here's our technology screen, just so you guys can see it. The ancient era, I'm going to assume that it's all the same for people, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe different cultures have different things. I can't imagine why they would, uh, but we're going to figure out what we're going to do. We can do city defense. We can do carpentry, which would uh, actually allow us to do uh, lumbering and then eventually the sawmill. It cannot be done to the industrial era. Era. As I said, with this advent of permanent settlements, though, naturally turns to security and defense. The earliest innovations are simple but effective. You can also do domestication. Uh, the taming and breeding of wild animals such as pigs and buffalo bring new meanings of eating and working. Or we can do the ca calendar, which will allow us to get, a, I guess, a little bit more, more, uh, more properly uh, involved with cropping, with crop building and stuff, right? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> we'll do carpentry. There we go. We got one idle city. We should be able to do something. We could actually build a, a, a pyramid. We could also do a farmer's market, which will get our food. Right now we have 11 more food than we need. We probably want to go ahead and grab. We have up to two people that we can do. So we have two spot slots that we can actually put this on. And this will be plus four from exploitation, plus one, minus 10 from districts. So they're not real big on this stuff, are they? And the districts, they're all about the districts here. I can actually do this right here. Plus eight, minus one, minus 10. Oh, that's stability. That's what it is. Stability from districts. Okay, got it, got it. So uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll set one up here. Maybe we'll go up here because there's that mountain we might be able to exploit. And that's going to take uh, four turns. And we got a pop population gain. Feels good in the hood, baby. All right, so we're going to push back on these enemies first of all. This is the Battle of Azah. Both sides are evenly matched. Uh, we can actually confirm this battle, or if we retreat, we'll lose uh, two two of our four action points for uh, I think a couple turns. But I'm not I'm not sure. We'll just go ahead and uh, do this. I'm gonna move him right here. Yeah, it's gonna be a good enough. We'll just end the deployment right there. They might just run. Doesn't look like they are. So we look like we could possibly lose here. We're gonna Your give it a family. shot anyway. Just running through the gauntlet of these two mountains. It didn't look like it's going to be all that great. Looks like they're going to try to fight us. Maybe they might actually be waiting. Yeah, they're defending. That's the reason. Minus 13 strength and they have 14 strength. So they're, we're, we're evenly matched, but it ain't looking so hot for us. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe defend this, this side and let's see what happens. And they defeated us. And they defeated us. I still haven't figured out the uh, battle part of it all, but... Yeah, so it feels bad right there. Well, hopefully, we, we won't, they won't come over here and raise this up. We do have a couple armies right here. Uh, should have another army coming up over here as well. And let's take a look at our stuff. Still three more turns for us to end it. I think we can undertake a common venture. Do you agree? And here's the our first... Uh, must ask my people. Our first chance at diplomacy, as you can see. The tra traders, the, the treaties... They were saying that we can not only trade luxuries, which would be fine. He's a little bit hesitant, but he doesn't want the war. He's got a little bit more war support on his side, partially because every time that you lose, your war support goes down. Kind of like the Vietnam War. You can have like a war of attrition, and eventually all your people will be like, hell no, we don't want to go. We ain't fighting for your, uh, your stupid war anymore. You're just killing all our people. And that's probably uh, what it is. But their war support is like, heck yeah, we're, we're kicking ass. Let's just go ahead and just get it over with and uh, take all their shit. That's how it works. We're just going to accept this offer. Seems like advantageous. 
if they'll allow it. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and accept Please it like this. accept your proposal, friend. My heart is warmed. Ah, warm heart. He's traitorous, ex extrovert, and vindictive. Strength is lumberjack, and he's a virtuoso. Plus five influence on com commons quarters. Huh. Learn something new. We have two more uh, turns before we can actually start doing archers, too. So that's good. New grievance available. Welcome. What is the grievance? You have news? The Nubians attacked one of your armies at Azza. Pay 100, 100 uh, gold, which we don't have. So we're just going to renounce Let it. Let bygones be bygones. What imagination you have. <laughs> He's like, eat a bag of dicks, Victor. Well, they're going to, they're, they're coming to attack us. That's for sure. What do you do? What do you do? Open ground. Hmm. Slows unit force, slows units, and restricts vision, but provides a defensive bonus against missile fire. We're not firing missiles just yet. What about right here? Slows unit. That's still all the same. What about these guys? Oh, they're all surrounding us. This isn't looking so hot. We'll just do an instant battle and see what happens. Yeah, see, they just went ahead and... You won the battle. What the hell? Without me at the helm, it actually worked. I can't believe it. We lost, so that's that. Should have had uh, the pros pro in charge, I guess. And our carpentry has finally been researched. Knowledge is power. We can finally build a lumber yard, actually get archers, and start to clear the forest. That feels good. Society's been established, and as you can see, we have the Nubians down here, and this is what we have. Mount R Romana was what was gives us a uh, plus five influence. We might want to bring some scouts and bring these guys over here as well. All right, so we'll f uh, found one more right down here. I haven't e explored all this, but we might as well just go ahead and just take care of it. And there we are. But we have our archers over here, and it looks like uh, all of our basically what's going to soon be our enemy is going to be right down to below us to the south. I think that this is pretty much gives you an idea of what this game is about. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, for a civilization game, it kept me enthralled for a hot minute. That's for sure. It might uh, keep you enthralled as well. You can always uh, wish list this on Steam. It's supposed to be coming out in August. It was actually supposed to be coming out two months ago, but they pushed it back probably because of COVID or something. Anyway, my name is Dragon Life. If you enjoyed this uh, video, you can always like the video. You can leave a comment down below and tell me how terrible i am at playing 5x games how i should never play games like this ever again or uh or whatever you can tell me also how beautiful i am and how great my, of my voice i have or whatever you want to do but at any rate i'll see you guys on the flizzy faux shizzle see you next time y'all thank you so much Bye bye